Test, test. Okay, you know here at Motor Gospel Ministries TV, it's pretty unscripted. Um, this is one of those moments, I don't know if you can hear me right now through the mic on the piano, uh, but we need to grab some batteries for the wireless mic. We'll be back in two minutes. Watch me have a double A's this uh
This is working. Good idea. Good job. For whoever it was. Yeah, Jesse, yeah, Jesse. Thank you. <laughs> Say amen. That makes it go up like this. Remember, we needed that clip because this rotates around my ear. I'm telling you that makes it oh, or nice. makes it go down. I guess. Oh, okay. I will try it your way if you want. I tried it before because I thought it would look better in the back, but the looks don't matter if the microphone isn't doing its job. I could scotch tape it to my cheek, I guess. Right? That's, that's the highest priority is having the microphone actually get some sound out there, right? Yeah. Okay, so the green light is on. Okay. Uh, crisis averted. We had a uh, uh, battery problem. Um, uh, welcome once again to Motor Gospel Ministries TV. Uh, we're glad you're joining us. If you're on your way, we'd love to see you here. 13691 Gavina, Unit 524. That's 13691 Gavina, Unit 524 in Silmar. Um, if you're joining us from home, we're glad you're joining us at home. Uh, there's a chat feature on the uh, Ustream uh, site. If you have questions or comments or anything uh, that you want to interject, prayer requests, feel free to put them there. Uh, and as well, we have the Facebook page up for Aaron Schwartzbart. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, message us or chat with us or give prayer requests or anything like that. Um, we're not quite in Christmas yet. We spent the last couple of weeks looking at whether it's appropriate for Christians to have a Christmas tree or not. And I've concluded that while it's a gray area, um, I've concluded that I'm comfortable having a Christmas tree. And I wasn't aiming for that conclusion prior to the, the study of the last two weeks. Um, any humble student of scripture honestly wants to search the scriptures. Anybody who has a relationship with Jesus, who is the bride, honestly wants to ask the bridegroom, how can we please you, Lord? What is it that you want uh, with regard to this matter? I've done both, and I've ended up uh, two weeks later uh, feeling pretty good about having a Christmas tree. We're not worshiping it. It's not a stumbling block to us. Um, for those of you, and there are mature Christians uh, at the other end of the spectrum that feel like because of any pagan association with it uh, or a risk of idolatry or materialism or something, they don't want anything to do with Christmas, and I respect that. But I've ended up deciding I feel fine about Christmas in our context, anyhow. 
um, as a result of that. Christmas is a couple of weeks away, uh, uh, so we may have some Christmas music in the, uh, in the time of contemplation tonight. Uh, we don't necessarily have that plan. We're not doing a concert here. This is a time of quiet, sober meditation and contemplation, a time of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, um, but it may flow that way. And then we'll get on with a, a message, uh, what's in your little jar there. Um, uh, stay tuned for the message. What's, you've seen the Capital One, what's in your wallet? This is what's in your jar. Um, we'll be talking about that uh, in a short while. Lord Jesus, we lift up everybody. I'll give you this in case anybody uh, calls or texts or anything. We lift up everybody here in my voice. Um, we lift up uh, Tom to you and uh, pray mighty, mighty, mighty angels with uh, mighty arms and flashing swords to protect him from himself and to protect him from everybody else around him. You know his situation right now better than we do. And we pray that Tom would be saved, that tonight would be his night of surrendering to you and um, bowing down uh, to one who's uh, uh, bigger than he is. We thank you for the, the privilege and the responsibility uh, to spend quiet time with you. We, we recognize that trying to run wide open throttle seven days a week uh, leads to burnout, that you didn't expect David to kill the giant uh, without David also taking time to rest in green pastures by quiet waters. We thank you for this time of rest. I pray this would be a time of rest for everybody here in the chapel with us. We pray that it would be a time of rest for everybody watching us at home um, or at coffee shops on their iPads, wherever they might be watching us, uh, a time of rest. I pray that we would let the, the troubles of the day, uh, that we would let go of them, that we would give them up to you and that the troubles of tomorrow we wouldn't be thinking about. Um, it's not tomorrow yet. I pray that we would just let everything else go and just let our bodies relax and just rest in your presence, Lord. Thank you for all that you've given us, including the Sabbath. Thank you for the Sabbath, Lord. And we pray for those that don't recognize that the Sabbath is for them. Pray that they would come to uh, understand uh, better how it is you've designed us to work. That any who are neglecting the Sabbath, neglecting rest, neglecting time with you, um, that they would, they would just have a new revelation of who you are and what you've designed us for. Thank you for the wonderful, exciting mission that you've given us with Motor Gospel Ministries. Such a, a, a high adrenaline, high stakes sport that we're involved with, with life and death riding on the line. But thank you even more for the relationship that we have with you. The mission is nothing uh, without you, Lord. Thank you that we can spend time resting before you. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs>
Christ was born
authority given to me by Jesus. I come against the spirit of suicide. For reasons we don't fully understand, Christmas can be a, a, a season that heightens people's sense of uh, loneliness and despair, hopelessness. But there is a true hope. There's hope in our Lord. By the power and the authority given to me by Jesus, Satan, I rebuke you wherever uh, you would be causing people to think about suicide. And I rebuke your minions wherever they would be tormenting people.
taken me from the miry clay and put my feet upon the rock and now I know I love you I need you though my world may fall please never let me go my savior my closest friend I will worship you until the very end I love you I need you Though my world may fall Please never let me go My Savior My closest friend
Christ.
place You passed the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people And the priests that sing your praise I hunger and thirst for righteousness But it's only found one place So take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holies Take the coals to my lips Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the Holy of Holies. Take the coals, touch my lips. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am.
coming before your throne we got a, a laundry list of stuff to ask for and uh, we thank you that in contrast to other gods uh, you you seem to want us to ask you we thank you that while we don't fully understand it at least I don't fully understand it you are God, I'm not. It's all about you, it's not all about me. And yet, despite that that humble standing that each of us should have before you, uh, knowing that it's all about you, not about us, somehow, mysteriously, uh, you seem to delight in our asking you. You seem pleased when your children come to you in need. And we're not here to make demands you are God, we're not. It's all about you, it's not all about us. But we thank you that you are a God that is approachable, that you want us to ask you. So we're here to ask tonight. We're here to ask for Tom. Uh, we're here to ask for his life. We're here to ask for him to get saved. We're here to ask for you to protect him from whatever bad elements are, are around there. Uh, if there's any chance that um, he was feeling suicidal. Uh, uh, we believe that you've given us the power to speak to demons and to speak to spirits. So we know that he is not dealing with that problem now that we have stepped on that. But we still ask you for uh, your protection. If any others are on the way to do him harm, uh, we pray that they would fall into a ditch somewhere, that they wouldn't even make it to his place, that they would get lost and confused and stop to ask for directions and end up going somewhere else. And we do pray that this would be his night of salvation, that this would be his night that he realizes that he's not all the man that he thought he was and that he would realize that he needs to depend on somebody bigger than him. Pray that that would be happening tonight, that we would get a miraculous, stunning, um, dramatic report from him tomorrow, things that we never expected to hear. We know that that's uh, not at all impossible because the same thing happened to me, the same thing has happened to so many others where people heard words that they never expected to hear from these lips. We thank you that that happens to people. We pray for everybody here in this, this my voice, whether it's here in person or over the internet. If that change hasn't happened to them, uh, we pray that it would happen, that they would have a miraculous change from the inside out and that people would be hearing words from their lips that nobody ever expected to hear. That it would be a miracle, not just a psychological assimilation or something, but a miracle. 
I pray for Sue. I pray that um, you would carry any weight tonight that you don't expect her to carry. If she's more worried about Tom than, than is fruitful or is of you, if she's feeling more of a sense of concern or responsibility for him uh, than is uh, of you, uh, we pray that you would just lift that weight off her shoulders, that she would trust in you, and that she would put her head on the pillow tonight knowing that not all of this is within her control, but that she knows the one uh, who can work miracles. She knows the one who parted the Red Sea. She knows the one who can make the, the crooked path straight and raise the dead and heal the sick and give sight to the blind. Pray that Sue would rest in that trust in you, that she would not try to take more uh, stress on her own uh, uh, her own shoulders than, than what you intended for her to. Pray for Ben. Pray for whatever the future holds for him uh, regarding employment, regarding sports, regarding his, his love of basketball. Um, uh, we just pray that if you haven't already done it, that you'd open just absolutely stunning doors for him. That he'd be, he'd be working for his favorite uh, uh, major league NBA team or something like that. Um, by this time next year. Pray that he would have a big, big report of how you're working in his life. Pray for Jerry with uh, uh, the decisions coming up, the decisions that he's made, and the decisions that he has yet to make now in big and small ways regarding cars and housing and employment and ministry and so many things. We're so, so excited about all that you've brought Jerry through over the last couple of years, Lord. And we just, uh, we're excited to see um, uh, how you're going to continue to guide him. Pray for Jesse and uh, the new business. And uh, we thank you for the the tough, tough lessons that she's learned over the years. We're sorry that uh, she suffered at the hand of others through no fault of her own. Um, we know what it's like to suffer at the hand of others through no fault of our own. You certainly know what it's like. Job knew what it was like. John the Baptist knew what it was like. We pray that Jesse would suffer no more. We pray that all the pieces would be in place for a glorious chapter of her life that would make all the other stuff uh, look like nothing by comparison. We pray that her ministry would be, her, her business would be huge um, uh, without any unrighteous compromise. We pray that she wouldn't, it, no matter how successful it gets, that she wouldn't worship uh, uh, dollars or business or uh, fame or, or comfort or luxury or any of that stuff, that she would worship only you and that you would be mightily, mightily glorified through these little seeds that you're planting there in Jesse's heart and in her, in her house with the new business. We pray uh, for Sue that you'd bring the right uh, roommate situation uh, if that's what you want to do, um, uh, or if you don't have the right roommate for her, we pray that you'd find some other way uh, to uh, uh, to make everything right for her uh, in her home, whatever that might look like. Pray that you'd speak to her, speak through others, uh, give her give her ideas, divine appointments, open doors, and um, I pray for my darling Tede. I thank you for the the good news we got at the uh, the checkup at Kaiser, the, the blood work uh, looking so uh, uh, so good. Um, I pray for health and healing in all areas of her life. I pray for the, the nasty uh, algebra test that she has Monday, that you bring clarity of mind to her, that you bring confidence to her and peace to her, that she'd go in there knowing that she left nothing on the table, that she spent everything she had to spend uh, for Monday, knowing that she did her best, not having any doubts about that. And um, I pray that uh, she would pass the class with flying colors and uh, get back to the artwork that you have, you have so gifted her for. And Lord, if there's anything you want us to do in the school system um, uh, beyond merely praying, if you want us to confront the, uh, uh, the fact that they have so much general ed, it's, it's arguably non-value added. If you want us to confront that in the natural uh, through our wisdom, through my talking, having years of educational background and stuff, talking to Patty Lopez or whomever it might be, uh, we just pray that you'd show us that, Lord. Make it clear. 
And uh, I pray for this exciting, exciting time for Motor Gospel Ministries with the, the, the for-profit merchandising arm growing out of it and all the alliances with the police and so many others. And I just pray that you protect us in that. Uh, may we never get bigger than you want us to get. May we never be smaller than you want us to be. Neither bigger nor smaller, but just right and always faithful to you and delightful to you in all that we do. We pray for Oreb uh, Milion uh, 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 in Haiti. We pray that you'd meet his needs both health-wise and as far as finances and work and all that. Pray for Isaac Lebesi in uh, Kenya. Um, pray for Victor and Samuel David there in India. Um, uh, and we pray you just fill up that big new building that they got um, with lots of people that can help them to afford the building that they got. I pray for all of these ministers around the world that they would not dream bigger than they should. If any of them are bringing trouble on themselves because they want to have a bigger ministry than what you've called them to, um, we pray that you would bring them to repent of that, that they would humble themselves. And if you only want them to minister to five people in a bedroom, that, that they would have the humility to receive that from you and not get uh, bigger ambitions than what you've provided for. I pray that all of us would be content with being uh, no more ambitious or no less ambitious than what you've provided for, what you've called us to. And we pray for Orion and John and uh, Erica tonight and Virgil and Kay. And um, I don't know all of their individual situations, but you do. We pray that you'd meet all of their needs tonight. We pray for uh, Bill Goff um, uh, with his uh, heart, with his health situation. Pray for uh, healing for him. Um, and if there's anything he needs to do differently diet-wise, we pray that you'd show him what that is. We thank you, Lord, for getting Jay Pena's daughter, uh, sister, rather, sorry, sister home uh, safe and sound um, uh, from her kidnappers and her, her, her little three-year-old child being home safe and sound, uh, uh, getting away from the kidnappers. Um, pray for uh, Paul and Misty Ben, uh, who have a loved one uh, in, a, in a health situation. Uh, whose name I don't remember, but you know the name, Lord. Pray for that situation. Pray that there would be healing, all kinds of healing. And for Grace and Melissa and Chad, all the wonderful ways you've used that little girl's suffering for good to help others who are suffering. And I pray that she would get to a point in her life where she suffers no more and where uh, she's completely healed and she just glows like a light bulb for you. She already glows like a light bulb for you, but we pray that there would be a day that she would glow like a light bulb for you, completely free of, of the, uh, uh, the sickness that she has. And I pray, we pray for Patty Lopez tonight. We know she called on your name. We think she called on your name sincerely. Uh, we know she won an election uh, against outrageous odds, and she knows they were outrageous odds. She wasn't planning on getting elected. Um, uh, such a beautiful thing that she's such a non-politician that she almost doesn't know what to do now that she actually won um, a, a beautiful thing but Lord we know many like her have started with the best of intentions and once they got into office they forgot about the little guys that, that voted them in once they got into office they forgot the Lord who they called on to try and get into office we pray for Patty Lopez tonight that she would never forget the little people that uh, got her elected in the first place, that she would never forget what humble beginnings she came from, that she didn't even expect to win. And um, we pray most of all that she would never forget the God who she cried out to uh, in the course of uh, putting her uh, election in your hands. We don't know if she's saved, Lord. We know she called out to you. Um, we know lots of people call out to you that might or might not be saved. If Patty's not already saved, we pray that there will be an army of angels in heaven uh, moving heaven and earth uh, for Patty to get born again um, before she even gets in office, that she would be born again, that she would be strong and fearless for you, and that she would not make any unrighteous compromises um, uh, 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 once her term starts. Yes.
If anybody else has any other prayers, feel free to offer them up. Potentially, I don't know if anybody needs a Bible. I'll see if anybody sent us any prayer requests real briefly. Yeah. Hey. Wow, very orange. So cool. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, You brought your Bibles open to. Uh, oh, yeah, some light. And Tara, if you'd uh, carefully bring those little jars. <laughs> huh? Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Please. We're going to do something tonight where it would be fun for you guys to get on the broadcast if you want to, but no pressure, only if it won't put you on the spot. You won't be taken by surprise. I'll tell you ahead of time what you'll be talking about so you can decide if it's something you're, you want to share or not, or if you have anything to share. Yeah. yeah. But we need our little props. So welcome once again to Motor Gospel Ministries TV. Uh, uh, we're in a, a lull here for uh, 30 seconds before we're going to get into the message. Uh, we're glad you're with us. Um, the broadcast is growing, I'm excited to say. We're averaging about uh, 21 people viewing the broadcast for, uh, per week now. Yep, very excited about it. Tell all your friends. Yeah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> so it's interesting. We've been talking about symbology the last couple of weeks in the context of deciding whether it was okay for Christians to have Christmas trees or not. Um, and we talked about for some, the Christmas tree is like an idol, so they feel like it's a terrible thing. It has pagan roots. They feel like that's a terrible thing. For others, the Christmas tree is a little decoration, like having a ficus plant in a pot, in the, as long as you don't worship it. Thank you, right? So that's where I ended up. Um, I honestly wasn't sure how I felt about it. I've had a Christmas tree. You know, I'm a Jew by blood uh, and a Christian by faith, so I didn't grow up with a Christmas tree. I was so excited when I became a Christian to have a Christmas tree and get into the sentiment and the festivity of the season and all that. And then before I knew it, Christians were telling me, no, you're not allowed to have a Christmas tree. That's, that's offensive to God. So I had mixed emotions about it, even though I've had a tree for many years now. I've never felt quite sure that it was okay with him. Now, after studying it for two weeks, Right, I feel fine about it as long as we're not worshiping it. Moses had a stick with a bronze statue of a snake on it. God told him to do that. Then people worshiped it. Then it was bad. Then Jesus brought it back as a symbol of his death on the cross, as a good thing. So, right? So we've, we've learned about symbology that symbols can have different meanings in different contexts. A peace sign might be a symbol of the devil in one context, and it might be a symbol of goodwill toward one's neighbor in another context. It, it, it really does depend on the context. Um, so interestingly, and, and I totally didn't plan this, this is just in my daily reading, this is something that God spoke to me about to share with you guys, and it involves yet another symbol, <laughs> uh, even though uh, I wasn't planning it that way. Um, tonight's message is called What's in Your Jar? Um, these are cheesy little um, pick and save uh, uh, made in China jars. They're not uh, expensive uh, things for you to make idols out of or anything like that. So each, each person take a jar, you can keep these. Um, uh, don't uh, yeah, and if you if you didn't like the shape that you got, you can trade with your neighbor or whatever. There are about three different shapes. <laughs> and, yeah, aren't they cute little jars? 
right? And they're, they're uh, the other one. Yeah, you got it. And they're uh, they're they're uh, they're not uh, they're not really pricey, fancy uh, you know technology. So if the wires break or anything, let us know. We'll get you another one. We'll trade it, or we'll fix it with a coat hanger wire or something like that. There's there's a scripture on top of the jar, and uh, did it break? Uh, do you need help? Whoops. <coughs> Bless you. Let me see if I can fix. You need any help? Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, stand by. Okay. Takes a rocket scientist sometime. Um, <laughs> okay. Or do you want Jerry to fix it for you while I talk? Can you can you fix that? Because you like that shape, right? Okay. So, what's in your jar? If you brought your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 16. Except Jerry, who's fixing Tara's jar for her. Um, uh, and uh, we'll start at the beginning of 16, so you have something of the context here. Exodus chapter 16. Oh, uh, that's the scripture, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start at uh, 16, so you have the context. Yeah. So yeah. So you have the whole. Um, uh, we won't spend a lot of time on an entire chapter. We'll zip through it pretty quick. But sometimes that's not a bit. Whoops. Uh, there, that's better. Uh, sometimes that's not a bad thing. The uh, the uh, you know some expositors uh, they read the word in in uh, uh, such detail that it's like slicing it and dicing it and watching a movie one frame at a time and you never really get to see the movie. Sometimes it's better just to have it wash over you like telling a story or watching a movie or something like that so you can really get the feel for, for what it's all about. So we're going to zip through. Is it all right now? Thank you, sir. Good job. So, so we're going to zip through chapter 16 fairly quickly and get to 1633. And then each of you is going to have a chance to be on the broadcast if you want to. I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, uh, but uh, so starting with uh, verse, uh, well, starting at the beginning of chapter 16. Um, Lord, thank you for your word. Pray that uh, I would have a humble opinion about your word, that we would apply great, uh, you know, we would give great authority to your word or, or recognize great authority in your word, but that my opinion would not be much compared to your word. And if I say anything that's wrong, I pray you protect the hearers and, um, and or correct me. Have somebody uh, text us or somebody right here uh, speak up and correct me if I say anything that's wrong. If there's anything in your word that we don't fully understand, give us peace about not fully understanding your word. I pray this in your precious and holy name, Jesus. Then they set out from Elim. This is the Israelites after uh, escaping from uh, Egypt. Then they set out from Elim, uh, Exodus chapter 16 at the beginning, and all the congregation of the sons of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin. I don't know if that's the way it's pronounced. Um, uh, yeah, which is, uh, it's, it's a, uh, a, you know, a name of a geographical location. Doesn't necessarily mean uh, Sin as we know it. Um, which is between Elim and Sinai, uh, or Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departure from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The sons of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them, whether or not they will walk in my instruction. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the sons of Israel, At evening you will know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your grumblings against the Lord. And what are we that you grumble against us? Ooh, that one just stops me in my tracks. Um, uh, Aaron and Moses, there's an implication that they were grumbling against Aaron and Moses. And Aaron and Moses were doing the will of God. So when we grumble against each other, I grumble against another pastor where I don't agree with him. I grumble against my wife because she won't give me what I want or whatever. Shame on me if, if that other pastor is the one who's right with God and not me. And I'm grumbling against the Lord's servant who's right with him. Shame on me if it's not my wife closing the door, but it's Jesus closing the door, saying, I don't want you to have a third donut or whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> that's not that's not Teddy making that decision. I'm telling her to do that. Can you imagine grumbling against your spouse and then standing before him one day and have him say, that was the one that was listening to me, not you. 
I don't ever want to hear that. You know, that, that stops me in my tracks. Who are we? What are we that you grumble against us? Moses and Aaron are saying to the congregation. Moses said, this will happen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and bread to the full in the morning. Um, for the Lord hears your grumblings, which you grumble against him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us, but against the Lord. I highlighted that because I take that real seriously and I don't know the sh- for sure. I'm not the smartest, most spiritual guy out there. How many times might I have grumbled against somebody and they were the one that was right with God, not me? That's a scary thing, right? But then Moses said to Aaron, say to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumblings. It came about as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the sons of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the grumblings of the sons of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it came about at evening that the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew evaporated, behold, on the surface of the wilderness there was a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. The original frosted flakes, 5,000 years ago or thereabouts, there were frosted flakes on the ground. When the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man as much as he should eat. You shall take an omer apiece according to the number of persons each of you has in his tent. The sons of Israel did so, and some gathered much and some little. When they measured it with an omer, uh, that was a a unit of measurement, like a bowl or a cup or something, particular size. He who had gathered much had no excess, and he who had gathered little had no lack. Every man gathered as much as he should eat. Moses said to them, let no man leave any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left part of it till morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And I suspect that's not just about food. We might buy stuff that we don't need and it's out in the garage and it rusts because it was more stuff than we actually needed. It never gets used. It was a waste of our money and it, yeah, because we didn't listen to him. And Moses was angry with them. They gathered it morning by morning, every man as much as he should eat. But when the sun grew hot, it would melt. Now on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. When all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, Uh, Then he said to them, this is what the Lord meant. One moment, I'm going to... There, that's a little better. Um, Now on the sixth day, sorry, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. When all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, then he said to them, this is what the Lord meant. Tomorrow is a Sabbath observance, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil. And all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning, as Moses had ordered, and it did not become foul, nor was there any worm in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. It came about on the seventh day that some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you bread for two days on the sixth day. Remain every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel named it manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. Sounds kind of like frosted flakes to me. Yeah. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer full of it be kept. An omer full of it uh, be kept (laughs) throughout your generations that they may see the bread that I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar. Say jar jar take a jar and put an omer full of manna in it 
and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The sons of Israel ate the manna for 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. And verse 30, 36, it tells us a little bit about the size of the Omer, um, but it, it doesn't mean anything in our modern language, unless any of you has it in a different version that has it in ounces or... Yeah, <laughs> whatever an ephah is, right? So the question is, what's in your jar? Um, very interesting, we were talking about symbology. Um, Exodus 16, 33, um, uh, Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omer full of manna in it. They put manna in the jar for it to be a reminder to the sons of Israel for generations to come um, of the Lord's ability to provide when they were grumbling against him. Even though they grumbled against him, he still didn't let them die. He still provided for them. Ah, thank you. Two quarts. Oh, that's a big jar. Okay, well, this is a, this is a souvenir, Omer, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's symbolic of the, the jar that held the manna that God told them. Right? <laughs> right? And God told them to do it. It wasn't just man debating, should we have a Christmas tree? Should we have a Christmas tree? And I wasn't still on the symbology. This was just something that I felt like he put on my heart. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so, you know, their jar had manna in it. And that was to be a reminder to the, the sons of Israel for generations to come whenever they saw it. And they set it up apparently like on the altar. I mean, it was there with the other religious artifacts and stuff. And yet that wasn't idolatry as far as God was concerned. God ordered that symbol. Um, he didn't explicitly say this is a symbol. He said this manna will remind them. Um, but I mean, clearly that's symbolic. It's to, to tell them about the good things God has done. It may come as a surprise to you guys, but I'm not 100% convinced of the gospel. I'm not 100% convinced that there's a God. I'm not 100% convinced of Jesus. Um, I'm, I'm so convinced of it that Jesus is the basket into which I've put my eggs for all of eternity. I'm so convinced of it that I spend all of my days with a car with John 3.16 on the side of it telling everybody about Jesus. This is my whole life. I'm, that's pretty convinced, um, I would say. <laughs> you know, if, 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 if talk is one thing, walk is a lot more than talk, right? My walk looks like I'm pretty convinced of the gospel. You know, he is my reason for existence. He matters more than happiness. He matters more than my life. He matters more than Tede does. Um, uh, and the feeling is mutual, of course. You know, we're both radically sold out for him. So I'm pretty darn convinced, but not 100%. When I get to heaven, I'm going to heave just the tiniest sigh of relief going, okay, it's real and I made it. <laughs> there are days when I have doubts. There are days when, for various reasons, sometimes, unfortunately, because I'm a little bit smart, Sometimes, unfortunately, because I'm a little bit educated, smart and educated are two different things. Sometimes the smart person has a harder time uh, dealing with something than the person who's maybe not quite as sharp because the smart person can get paralyzed with analysis. You know, they call it uh, uh, paralysis of analysis where you think too much and you go, well, this or that. It could be this, it could be that. And you're so philosophical, you spend all day thinking about stuff, uh, you know. So sometimes that's my problem. Other days, it's when things go wrong. I really thought I heard something from him and I go down that path and it doesn't go right. And I can still intellectually say, okay, well, I don't know. I heard him wrong or this is the way he wanted it to turn out. John the Baptist, he apparently wanted him to get his head cut off and uh, we don't know why. He doesn't owe us any explanations. Um, but for whatever reason, some days there are doubts. Um, I think a little jar with manna in it for me to look at on those days when I'm having doubts is probably a really useful thing. The Bible doesn't necessarily say we each have to have a jar um, uh, with, with a reminder in it. I think the manna in this case, it was a reminder more than anything. Sometimes we need to be reminded of stuff. Um, my jar, I could bore you all night and the stories take way too long to tell, but I have a, I have a story of um, maybe, maybe around the dinner table, I'll tell it if, if we're, yeah, but a story about um, at least one thing that looks absolutely miraculous in the racing world on a race car involving mechanical parts that did something that they could not possibly do with outrageous timing. Uh, it's it's longer story than we have time for. Um, uh, a story about somebody knowing me, a total stranger knowing something about me in church, saying something about me that I didn't tell anybody. Nobody could have known it. Um, uh, that's in my little jar. Um, 
uh, a story where I was really mad at the race car. I was having a really hard time early on in NASCAR, and I was I was cursing the car and throwing stuff at it. I wasn't a Christian yet. I was in my seeking phase. Christians had already laid hands on me, and I had experienced electricity going up and down my back, and I was going back again and again for prayer, but I was still in unrepentant sin, and unashamedly so. I wasn't claiming to be a Christian. I was open. I was starting to be interested, but I wasn't a Christian. So I sort of already had some kind of relationship with God, some knowledge of God, um, but I wasn't really a Christian yet. I, I, and, and, and people were telling me, Aaron, you're, you're, thank you. You're running yourself too ragged. Um, uh, you're not getting enough sleep. You're trying to make up for way too much lost time uh, of not being a third generation race car driver. I was the first one in my family to race. So I had a long, steep learning curve. And to, to achieve that, I was sleeping three hours a night, drinking 20 cups of coffee a day, working 80 hours a week. You know, <laughs> not, not a good formula for somebody to think clearly behind the wheel of a, a race car in a, in a pack of race cars, right? People were telling me, you need to rest. You need to slow down. You can't do it this fast. And I was getting mad, and I was cussing at the car. And I actually started crying. I was so frustrated. A grown man crying has got to be frustrated. Um, and, and all of a sudden... And I was saying, I don't need rest. I'm not tired. All I need is an engine that won't blow up because I, I had engines blowing up left and right and stuff. Everything was going wrong. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit brought to mind um, something, an experiment that I had been doing on my streetcar months earlier in which I had disconnected the steering and left it hanging by a thread under the car. And I hadn't thought about it in months. That's the car that I drove to work every day. I drove this car 90 miles an hour in rush hour traffic, city surface street rush hour traffic, five days a week. I turned left... Right, 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 right. I turn left 60 miles an hour in city surface street, yeah. unbanked left-hand turns, intersection turns, 60 miles an hour, right back up to 90 miles, with the steering hanging by a thread, ready to fall apart at every, any minute, because I had disconnected it and, and left the nut on there just by hanging by a thread months earlier, and yet had not fallen apart. I didn't cause an accident and kill five people. But the Lord, right in that moment when I was saying, I don't need a rest, I'm fine, um, he gave me this flashback of, of disconnecting that steering and putting it back on only with one thread. I wasn't thinking about that at all. And I went over to the, this was my street car, not the race car. I went over to my street car and I put my hand under there and yep, that nut came off. <laughs> it was right there hanging my thread. That's in my little jar of manna. On days when I'm tempted to doubt or grow weary or feel sad or even just sometimes we don't doubt, but we just we don't feel that enthusiastic about how things are going in our relationship with him um sometimes we need this little jar with stuff in there to remind us of the things he's done um you know if they were really focused on the red sea parting they probably wouldn't have grumbled in the desert they would have been so you know they had to forget they had to have forgotten about seeing that to be an yeah so i don't want to put anybody on the spot but those are a couple three things and they're way too long of stories for me to tell now but those are like three that come to mind there are probably dozens that i have in my little jar my exodus 1633 jar my mana jar to remind me and i'm actually going to write those we'll do this later we don't have time now but i'm going to write a little piece of paper yeah if we get a little piece of paper or index card or whatever for each person and you can write a couple of little, little things and put them in your jar and you don't have to it's not an idol if it's just one more thing to clutter your place you can throw it out or sell it at a garage sale or something but if you want to save it and put yeah and put some things in your jar to remind you during those times um uh, that'd be great and i don't want to put anybody on the spot but would any of you like to share uh on the broadcast here what it is that that's what's in your jar Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Think about it. Yeah. Okay. You want me to talk for you, or do you want to? Not you. Okay. The the truck. Okay. Or is there a different one? Okay. Tear was standing on a street corner, huh? Oh, the hand. Oh, okay. That's heavy. Okay. These are for Tede. She's, she's a little bit camera shy. She doesn't love the spotlight like I do, um, but she's given me permission to share what's in her jar. Um, They're tiny. I have like a hundred. Mm, and mm. But those two, okay. This is very personal stuff. I'm, I'm really proud of you. Okay, not the, not the one with the hand. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Never mind. Uh, one of them was very personal. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Tara was standing on a street corner. Um, and if I tell it wrong, feel free to straighten me out. She was standing on a street corner, and somebody grabbed her from behind and jerked her back. And just as somebody grabbed her, grabbed her from behind and jerked her back, a 
truck came by uh, that would have hit her. Uh oh. Oh, she stepped into the street. Oh, Tara was walking at a green light four or five feet from the curb. She had walked into the street, and somebody grabbed her from shoulder and jerked her backward. And just as she did that, a truck ran a red light and, uh, and drove right across. Right. And, uh, right. and, uh, and the truck clearly would have run her over if this person had not grabbed her shoulder and jerked her back. And when she turned around, there was nobody there. That is something. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's in the jar. <laughs> yeah. it's kind of makes you wonder how you could ever doubt him or have a bad feeling toward him or something after something like that but our memories are short the Israelites memories were short my memory is short Yo, do you want to stand here in front of? The no, okay. Um, Go ahead. It was like uh, I think 2009 during the summer. I had uh, there was three, three, three white dudes that were knocking on my door, and I I never seen them before. <laughs> so uh, they were knocking probably for like a straight minute, but, and I saw them through the window, and uh, I didn't know them, so I didn't answer the door. It was probably like around 9:30 in the morning. And uh, I went back to my room, and he used to have a black lab in the back. And he was just barking, barking, and he had a little white dog. And uh, the the window in the living room was, it was open, but it was like the reverse way, you know, like you could see out. Ah. And I saw one of the dudes jump in the back, and then the other one jumped in the back, and then the other guy jumped. Uh. And they were all trying to open my door, oh. or I open my window, I mean. Oh. And I had a one of those like plastic covers that I had the air conditioner and um, one guy was right there and the other guy was in my patio trying to open my mom's window wow. and I was, I was freaking out because 
I was just asleep, yeah. Uh, I can't even think straight. So right. I called the um, I called the police, and the uh, the guy's hands were like he broke through the the little plastic, and his hands were like right in my room, and I felt the top. I don't know where to hide it. Right. He told me to go hide in my house. Oh. And um, so he's just told me go hide, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna run up to the front door. <laughs> right, so right. I grabbed, I grabbed my little dog, and I I ran to my neighbor's house. When that was happening, I honestly was like, please God, like, protect me. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Yeah. But I, I honestly think God was watching me the whole time. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. Do you want to get in front of the camera? No. No, okay. This happened when I was 17 years old. Okay. Okay. Okay, every time there was school vacation, I would go visit my aunt, who was in another province. I, I like going there. Yeah. Literally just a sleeping bag or just a mat. It, it just was in the place. Yeah. Okay, I, I um me and and three cousins bedded down, set our beds in the kitchen uh, under the dining room table. Okay. So okay we slept. We slept. Well we slept because the next morning I was still alive and I looked up, the house was robbed. Serious? And Everything was taken out. All the uh, electronic equipment, the hi-fi, the, the TV, the radio, everything. No. Are you serious? Anything. Are you serious? I mean, they just tiptoed over us. Oh. I mean, hey, <laughs> they could have killed us. Right, right. They could have killed us. Right, right. But the house was empty when we got up in the morning. Wow. But nobody was hurt. Wow. Nobody was hurt. Wow. You know something? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> the TV. Uh, uh, wow. Yes. And I, I have no idea how they did it. Wow. Yeah. That was something. I wonder if God miraculously kept you guys asleep so there wouldn't be a confrontation. That was weird. Yeah. Huh. That was weird. And then I have another one. Uh -huh. God, it's not me, but I have to share this. Okay. 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 Uh, the pastor of the church I was attending, there was this pastor and his family, and it was time for them to take a vacation. So they went. Yeah. There was a hand moving the car back to the track. You're kidding. Look, it's just a hand. Are you serious? Just a hand. <laughs> just a hand. Wow. And the car actually moved back yeah, out of the precarious position. Moved back, straighten up, and they went again. Face. Wow. Wow. It was a hand. Wow. Saw a hand. Wow. 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 That's cool. That's yeah. I know that's nice. Yeah, right. Like you. Right, right. 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 Wow. Wow. Right. Right. Yes. Just straightening the car. One hand. Wow. Straightening the car. Wow. Like the size of a human. Wow. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Mm.
Oh. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I bet. I bet. I don't blame you under the circumstances. Uh, right, right. He has really plans for you. Yeah. You have to believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I have a tattoo that is easy for me to remember. Okay. Do you want the uh, mic and the camera? Huh? Okay. Yay. Yay, Jerry. Jerry Baxter. Yay. <laughs> you can hold it or put it on your ear, whatever you want. Okay. Hello. So, um, it was when I was a little kid. I was about um, four years old. And um, I was walking through the mall with my, with my grandma and my great aunt. It was uh, her sister, um, Aunt Ada was her name. And um, I think I was, like, I was like skipping. I was holding on to both of their hands. And I was like skipping or trotting or something. And it was kind of like, like jerking on my grandma's shoulder. I, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't realize that I was jerking her shoulder, but I guess my aunt was, um, it was like upsetting her, or irritating her that I was, I was hurting my grandmother. Yeah. So, um, out of, out of irritation, she like, like tripped me. She spun my arm uh -huh. and, and tripped me. So I went face first down onto the, um, the hard floor of the, uh, mall. It was like Macy's or something we were walking through. And there was, there was like as much distance between my forehead and the ground to fit a hand in between cool. and my forehead didn't didn't make contact with the ground at serious? all yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i didn't i didn't hit the floor i got back up and i there was no contact wow. i remember it a little bit i yeah. m my my head my head never hit the floor no i was i went face first wow. yeah <laughs> yeah just enough space for a hand it was wow. amazing wow. Wow. and there was a time not much later maybe a year later I think so. You were four I think so. Um, I was in a, I was mystery shopping uh, apartments with my mom. She was pretending to to buy stuff, getting getting some information to write a report. And so I was about five five years old or so, and um, it was there was up a big flight of stairs, and on our way back when we were done, I started walking down the stairs ahead of everybody else like I. I wanted to go back to the car by myself or something. And um, I skipped a step on the stairs and I, I tumbled and, and rolled somersaulted all the way down the, the stair set. But I was wearing a, a baseball cap and the baseball cap was covering my face the whole time. <laughs> and I, I, didn't, I didn't have a scratch on me when I got down to the bottom. The cap didn't fall off. No, the cap didn't fall off. It stayed in front of my face. I didn't have a scratch or a bruise or anything. <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I think that was kind of a miraculous experience I can remember. Yeah, yeah. You have to believe in the master. Absolutely. Take it over. Thank you for sharing. Who else? Do you want on the camera or do you want to stay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was coming from, from the front line, mm -hmm. and then I was I said, oh, I'm going to find you, the, the light was green, and I stopped, and I said, somebody stopped me right there, mm -hmm. and I thought it was something really bad. So oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So nobody, I didn't feel any hand touching me. Yeah. yeah. You stopped in your tracks even though it was a green light. The, the light was, I thought it was on my top, it was green. Right yeah. Huh? Sorry. Oh, no problem. Very cool. Let's see what time it is here. 8.40. Yeah, that's probably good. I was, uh, uh, unless, anybody else? Okay. I have two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, 
I was going to elaborate on, on one of them, but uh, uh, being this late, I won't. We'll just, uh, we can discuss it at dinner. Those of you uh, watching us at home, uh, you'll have to uh, have coffee with me sometime or get together or something to hear the other stories. Remind me to tell you about the melted distributor um, and about the chest hair. Uh, those are the two things that, that I won't get into right now, but people are here right at dinner. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Think of this little jar thing. If you want a jar, uh, hit me up. Uh, see me on Facebook. Email me on uh, do it on the chat thing here on the uh, uh, the uh, Ustream. Um, we'll get you a little jar that says Exodus 16:33 at the top, um, so you too can uh, write write down little things that'd be important for you to look at uh, if your faith is wavering or you're having a bad day or something. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. We love you. And um, uh, Merry Christmas uh, uh, in anticipation. Um, uh, and we'll uh, talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.